Well, welcome. I'm your mayor, Stacy Kinder, and with me today, I have your chief of police, Wes Blair. In our videos, we hope to cover the issues most important to you, and today we're talking about public safety. Welcome, Chief. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. Um, first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I you know, came to Cape Girardeau about nine years ago um, okay. to take the job as police chief here and uh, was just blown away by this community when I first got here. It's just a, such a great community. Um, but spent most of my career in, in law enforcement. Uh, I've been in law enforcement since 1995. Uh, worked various levels uh, with municipal policing, right. uh, some federal stints with Border Patrol and United Air Marshal Service. And I found, did not know that. Yeah, so I uh, okay. found that uh, municipal policing was kind of my niche. The thing I liked the most was working with local people. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that since uh, early 2000s. Okay. Well, you've, so you've been here almost 10 years. How have things changed? Uh, particularly in your job? That yeah, you know, we've seen a lot of changes, and, and it's not just local, it's, it's nationally and across the state. Um, you know, in, in a lot of respects, our job's gotten much harder than mm -hmm. what it used to be. Um, there's more and more restrictions placed on policing, more, more scrutiny placed on policing, mm -hmm. which, you know, scrutiny's not necessarily a bad thing. We, right, we all should right. be able to self-check and right. make sure we're doing the right thing. But uh, you know, sometimes you see that, like the national narratives made policing a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. for the men and women out on the street. And that's probably mm -hmm. one of the biggest changes. Mm -hmm. Well, that I'll jump ahead uh, to, um, since you're talking about some changes, but also challenges. Do you mm -hmm. want to speak to, um, go into that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. About, yeah. yeah. So some of the challenges that we face here, especially in the state of Major Missouri, is there are been so many legislative challenges mm -hmm. placed on us um, mm -hmm. through either the court system and not being able to hold people accountable through municipal court for ordinance violations up to uh, the recent legislation, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, which mm -hmm. forbids us as police officers to work with the federal gun government on any gun crimes, um, which you know, we were seeing a whole lot of really good success in putting felons away into federal prison with guns, and now we can't even cooperate with the federal government. So that, that's a challenge. Yeah. Um, but we're also innovators, and we, so we try to think of ways to, to work around that, and we advocate with our legislators on a, on a routine basis to try to get uh, laws that are law enforcement friendly. Mm -hmm. And how could we, uh, I mean, is, is there a way for the city, particularly your city council, um, to help with that legislative side of things? Absolutely. Communication. Advoc advocacy yeah. is, is a big thing. It, yeah. It's one thing for legislators to hear from us in law enforcement. Yeah. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I support everybody's right to, to own a firearm. I'm a, I'm a member of the NRA myself. Um, but we do have to have common sense legislation. So right. when, it's, when I am talking to legislators, they're only getting a law enforcement police perspective. Mm -hmm. Council members and citizens talk to legislators about it. They're getting right. a real perspective of the people that are actually impacted by these laws. Right, right. Uh, well, tell us about uh, staffing issues. That's certainly something I think the, the public is, has become better aware of, mm -hmm. um, the challenges there, but tell us how that's going. Yeah, so, so staffing, um, I, I think we're all saying globally, whether yeah. you're, you're working a, a McDonald's or, or any corporate environment, yeah. that it is a struggle to find employees right now. Well, yeah. we, we see that doubled down because of what I just talked about earlier, so much scrutiny and um, some of the national sentiment around law enforcement now makes it even more difficult for us to, to onboard people who want to, to be in this career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think we'll see that pendulum swing. You know, we just recently on, onboarded five officers mm -hmm. in, the, in the last week, four that are working out on the streets right now and one that will be going to the academy shortly. Okay. Um, and so we're starting to see a little bit of a swing back in the other direction, but you know, it will take time yeah. to, to get those back. But you know, the, we just have to keep being progressive and trying to get those, yep. those people out there to want to come and be police officers. And one of the great things about our community is there's not the negativity surrounding law enforcement that you see in a lot of other parts of the country. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a huge benefit for us as far as recruiting goes. Yeah, that's, uh, we certainly, um, I hear that, you know, as, as a city council person and as mayor, and, and I know others do, um, just when, when the community comes and talks about public safety or, or police department issues, um, nearly everyone is always quick to point out that they are very supportive of our police department here. Um, Absolutely. And I, I 
it sounds like you you all know that firsthand as well. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. this community loves on us. Um, oftentimes with a lot of food during during the week, which is not necessarily <laughs> a good thing for some of us. But every little bit helps. <laughs> but um, you know, I've worked in communities where you didn't see that, or if a group brought food into your police station, we just politely thanked them and threw it in the trash because we weren't really sure what was in that food. We don't, but we don't deal with that here in Cape Girardeau. We have right. a, a very open community that is obvious, loves their law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, well, tell us about new programs or tools um, that you've got going on okay. um, and that, or that you see in the future. Yeah, so needed. one of the, I think the most impactful tools that we were able to put together was our shot spotter system mm -hmm. recently, um, which is basically gunshot detection system that's set up in an area of town that has the most gunfire in it. Um, and within two weeks of getting that deployed, we were able to, to get a felon off the street mm -hmm. with a firearm based off that hit from the shot spotter. And so mm -hmm. that's a good out of the gate win for us. And yeah. I think we'll see some more of that. And we'll see as people realize, well, if I fire a gun off, um, the cops are gonna be there like within 30 or 45 seconds, maybe I won't do that in Cape Girardeau. Mm -hmm. um, that's, mm -hmm. that's the ultimate goal that we right. want to see happen with that. Right. Um, and then, you know, we're always looking for new ways to engage with our community. You know, we, we do the neighborhood roll calls now, which mm -hmm. is one of our biggest thing programs that we love doing, which is where officers on a Thursday night throughout the summer go out and do the roll call that they would normally have inside a briefing room, but they do it out on the street where they can meet the citizens um, and citizens can come and hear the roll call. And uh, sometimes we have ice cream for the kids and, and little things like that just to engage with the community and get to know the community a little bit better. I hear people really raving about that. Um, it's uh, It's been a great program for yeah. us so far. And you know, when COVID hit, we, like everybody, we had to stop doing a whole right. lot of our stuff. And then you lose connection with your community when you do that. So we're really glad that we're able to start getting back out and do a whole lot of these yeah. things. Yeah. Well, just staying on the, the technology front for a second, is, are there, uh, are you seeing results from ShotSpotter, um, you know, you mentioned the, the, the one case, but just in terms of um, perhaps uh, communicating better with the with the public or, or with people who are firing guns or, um, you know, is that bringing some kind of um, reduction yet? Sure, yeah. Do you I, see? Yeah, yeah. I, it may be too early to really say yeah. there's a reduction because it's yeah. only been in place a couple of months right. now. Right. Um, but one of the benefits is that we know exactly where that gunfire happens. Right. So when the officers respond, they can make connections and contact with people right where it happened as opposed to searching a you know, multi three or four block area and maybe not being able to connect with the people who were really impacted by that gunfire, mm -hmm. whether by, because they were afraid, because it happened right outside their house. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but we can now go right to that scene, knock on some doors and go, hey, you know, we, we heard that we know there was some gunfire here, Are you okay? Um, and just kind of build that rapport with people a little yeah, bit Yeah, that's better. gotta be reassuring, right? Yeah, that the cops are showing yeah. up right where the gunfire right. is. Because so often right. we, we'll hear, you know, somebody will call in and say, well, we heard gunfire and we called the cops and we told them, you know, what direction we thought it was and we never saw a police officer. Right. Well, that doesn't mean the police officer wasn't there. Right. He just went to where they thought the gunfire right. might, where they were being directed by the multiple callers, right. and you may not have gotten to the right area. Mm -hmm. And so this, I think, alleviates a lot of that. You're already seeing that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're looking forward to hearing more data about that in time. But um, one thing we talked, we had a council workshop the other day, and one thing we ended up talking about quite a bit was were nuisance issues. Mm -hmm. And that's a wide-ranging topic, mm -hmm. um, but some of those issues involve do involve the the police department and public safety. Um, can you speak to that a little bit and then um, talk about how you know public uh, involvement in that right. can help some citizens? Yeah, so yeah. all of us want peace in nice yeah. and clean neighborhoods, right? And we, we don't like the noise, we don't like to see junk vehicles parked in yards right. um, and things like that. So you know what we encourage, especially with noise issues, because we get you know we get a lot of complaints about my neighbors making this much noise. Um, but people always want to remain anonymous. And I understand that. I have neighbors, and I, you know, I don't want to get in a tiff with my neighbors. But right. unfortunately, or fortunately, the Constitution um, gives us the right to face our accusers in court. So if somebody wants something done about noise, they actually have to be willing to come to court and say this person's noise disturbed us. So the noise complaint nuisance issue is one of those where um, an anonymous call is not going to be yeah. helpful. Not, not too helpful. I mean, we yeah. can still go out to that area. Mm -hmm. We can maybe make contact with the person and ask them if they could turn their music down or stop revving right. their motor or whatever. 
um, but we can't really take any kind of enforcement action unless we have a somebody who is willing to be the the victim of that or the mm -hmm. complainant on that. Mm -hmm. So that ties our hands a little bit on, mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. Talk to us though about, um, I mean, nuisance issues, of course, you know, you can have the the uh, unchained dog or the high weeds, but um, the, the criminal nuisance issues that people might be concerned about. Um, um, like, I guess, like specifically like drug issues and right, things like that. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so if, if somebody thinks that drugs are being sold or something mm -hmm. from a house in their neighborhood, we encourage, and that's, that's perfectly okay to be anonymous mm -hmm. on, on those. We encourage you to contact us, even if it's anonymous, and give us a heads up that that's going on. Um, and then we'll put our drug task force people on it. Um, everybody always wants to see instant results. And so doing drug investigations is not a, hey, I called you and you go and kick the door down tonight kind of thing. You've got to make so many buys out of that house with undercover officers and, and do all these things to build your cases. I see. But we still want to know about those because yeah. we do want to put, get those houses on our radars mm -hmm. so that we can alleviate those, mm -hmm. those drug houses. And uh, even with our staffing shortages that we have right now, we still put a, a, a high priority mm -hmm. on trying to tackle the drug issue in our town. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something that's, that's dropped off just because we have staffing issues. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, that's, that's, I know, reassuring to, to, for people to hear. And the anonymous tip line is um, a big, yep. uh, important piece that, that our public can, right. we, can use. Right. We have the anonymous tip line right. and the anonymous text line. You can go to our, our website and, and see how to access that mm -hmm. or follow us on Facebook and see how to access all the different ways mm -hmm. to get information to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this gets into the whole issue of the citizens' responsibility or, or participation in helping some of these issues. Is there, uh, so the, the city website is a great place to go, um, cityofcape.org slash contact. Um, you can always call uh, City Hall and, and uh, you'll get routed um, to the proper channels or, or the police department, I assume, and um, um, be able to find the right person to speak to there. What else can you share with the public, you know, that might be um, helpful? Is there any, you know, be, beyond those things, um, is there anything that, that we can do? Neighborhood watches or Right, you know, and, like that? and that's, that's a good yeah. point. You know, I, the neighborhood watch seems to be a, a kind of a dinosaur in today's era. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have gone to doing like the Facebook pages mm -hmm. with neighborhood watches. Mm -hmm. Um, or different things like that. And if you do have a Facebook neighborhood watch group, contact us and, and, and we can add our, our police department Facebook page to that. Not that yep. we're monitoring that watch group 24 seven, obviously, right. um, but you, we can have those connections through that. Um, we have a community service division officers that mm -hmm. um, want to engage with our community. So if somebody does actually have a neighborhood watch group and they want us involved in it, we would love to be involved in that and, oh, and participate with that. Yeah, okay, great. Well, last question, um, if there's anyone out there or perhaps people with children who are considering work in public safety, what, what advice do you have or what thoughts do you have about it? Um, you, you know, I, we talk about the national sentiment and how hard it is to, to be in law enforcement these days, but it, I, it's still, in my opinion, it's one of the no, most noble professions that you, there Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And as a parent of an 18 year old who he himself is is considering maybe a career in law enforcement maybe something else yeah. um, you know he and I actually had a conversation about this on the back deck the other night and I, he's like do you want me to be a cop and I said as a dad probably no um, but as somebody who's been engaged in this very noble profession for most of my life mm -hmm. um, there's there are very few occupations that you can really be impactful and make a difference in people's lives on a daily basis yeah. when they're in their worst moments yeah. Um, you know, policing, policing firefighting, um, nurses, um, anybody that's a first responder, we have that opportunity to really make a difference and really impact people on their worst days. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that's a rewarding thing. So if somebody's wanting a career that, that they really want to have some self-value and self-worth at the end of the day, uh, law enforcement is, obviously that's my first choice, law enforcement, right. um, but any, any public service um, mm -hmm. job. It's not without its ups and downs, and sometimes it, it can really weigh on you, but at the end of the day, you can, you can hang your hat up and say, you know, I made a difference. I did something good today. Yeah. Well, as you mentioned before, and, and we talked about the, um, I think the public support here in Cape Girardeau for our uh, public safety people and for the police department in particular, um, I, I think is, is 
a bit unique and special. It is. Um, but for those reasons, we, we certainly appreciate um, anyone who is willing to, to do that daily work um, because it's, it's a, basic, uh, a basic thing that a community needs is, is public safety. So absolutely. thank you for your time. Thank you for your service, thank for sure. You. Um, we uh, are wrapping up. That's all we have for today. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you'd like to see in the next program. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments here. Um, you can connect with us anytime by calling or visiting cityofcape.org contact. Stay safe, Cape. Thanks. <laughs>